Peace be with you. The hottest debate 2017 in Indonesia, over 2 billion Christians and Muslims shall benefit from this debate. By invoking the United States Fair Use Law, I shall comment on the impromptu debate between Lamson Nabaho and Zaker Naik in respect of three questions, 1. Is Isa of the Quran the same Jesus of the Holy Bible? 2. If Isa is Jesus, did the crucifixion of Jesus really occur? 3. If there is a crucifixion, who was crucified? The live debate was held in Bikasi, in Indonesia on April 8, 2017. I shall assist Lambs and Nabaho to present the overall Christian perspective based on the Holy Bible. Whenever there is discrepancy between the Biblical Jesus Christ and Theranic Isa as preached by Zaker Naik, I shall interject by inserting my comments. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, it is written, Come now, and let us reason together, says Yahweh. It is a noble task to rationalize together based on the scriptural evidence and archaeological evidence available to us. Hence, invest about 60 minutes of your time so as to watch through this documentary and know the truth once and for all. However, the credibility of Zaker Naik is in question, as he did not wish to submit himself to the inquiry of National Investigation Agency NIA Court in Mumbai. If he were innocent, why he has no courage to stand before the court, as required by the law of India. No man is above the law. According to the news posted on IndianExpress.com on April 20, 2017, the special NIA court in Mumbai, issued a non-bailable warrant of arrest against the controversial Islamic preacher Zaker Naik, for his alleged money laundering and his provocative speech that led to Dhaka, terror attack last year. Let the listeners be the honorable judges so as, to determine whose versions of Jesus Christ is reliable. By the end of this video, every listener will be able to come to the conclusion as to, who is the historical Jesus Christ. Nama saya adalah Lamsen Naibaho. Tinggal di Bekasi, beragama Kristen Advent. Tidak makan babi, tidak minum bir, tidak minum kopi, tidak minum teh, tidak makan anjing, tidak makan belut, tidak makan kuda, dan banyak lagi tidak kami makan karena dilarang oleh Allah melalui Alkitabnya. Kalau melihat dari besarnya acara ini, saat ini rasanya ingin bersahadat. Ask a question directly. Only ask one question which is the most important. Satu pertanyaan. Apakah Isa itu Yesus? Is Isa the prophet is Jesus? I think you did not hear my lecture. I think you did not hear my lecture. I said in my lecture that we be no Muslim is a Muslim unless he believes in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Every Muslim, if he has to be a Muslim, he has to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. But Isa of the Quran is not the historical Jesus Christ found in the Holy Bible for these three reasons. One. Isa of the Quran is the son of Mary sister of Aaron based on Quran chapter 19 verse 27 to 28, which implies he is the son of Levi son of Jacob, as the Hebrews used to address one's relationship to the most influential man in the family tree, whereas the historical Jesus Christ is the son of David, as he claimed in Revelation chapter 22 verse 16, which implies he is the son of Judah son of Jacob. These two persons did not come from the same son of Jacob and hence they cannot be the same person. 2. Isa, the son of Mary spoke for Allah based on Quran chapter 61 verse 6, I am the messenger of Allah, which in Hebrew means an oak tree. But Lord Jesus Christ spoke for Yahweh God which he said, I am my father or Echad and that Echad means, the spirit of the father is in me and I am in my father based on John chapter 10 verses 30 and 38. 3. Isa, 
The son of Mary did not say about the sign of Jonah, who was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish that he would fulfill. But Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 12 verse 39 to 40, But he replied and said to them, A wicked and adulterous generation demandeth a sign, but a sign will not be given to it, unless it be the sign of Jonah the prophet. For as Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. The heart of the earth must be parallel to the belly of the great fish which is alive, that is the heart of the first Adam. Since Isa of the Quran did not enter the heart of Adam for the specified duration, then they are not the same person. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. Brother, did you hear my lecture? Brother, did you hear my lecture? Saya di negara Indonesia. Did you hear my lecture, yes or no? Don't give speeches. Did you hear my lecture, yes or no? Kurang paham. Uh, I actually just understand purely. So if you did not hear my lecture, is it right to ask me a question? I said in my lecture, it is compulsory. Every Muslim should believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. Why didn't you take a translation headphone? There are hundreds and thousands of headphones here. Why did not you take a headphone? Brother, ask him, why didn't he take a headphone? Whose fault is it? My fault or your fault? Why didn't you take this headphone? Tidak dipersiapkan oleh panitia, jadi saya tidak bawa lagi. His question is Jesus is same with Isa, is same person. Yes, Isa. Jesus and Isa is same. In Arabic we say Isa. In other languages they twist it and they make it Jesus. He is the one and the same person. Nowhere in the Quran. Isa son of Mary made an explicit claim, I am Yushua of Nazareth and I am also known as Isa to the Arabs. Ladies and gentlemen, the precedent laws in the Torah of Yahweh God Almighty forbid the plagiarism of his holy scripture, and give his glory to a pagan God, which he has not spoken. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8, it is written, I am Yahweh, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Do Muslims know the difference between translation and prophecy? Translation is the effort of a man who does not have to give his own name, whereas prophecy is the spoken word of Yahweh God Almighty, who have to speak his name whenever he has spoken the message, as seen in the aforesaid verse. Quran chapter 46 verse 12 says Quran is an Arabic translation from the scripture inspired to Prophet Moses. But Quran chapter 20 verse 14 on the translated version I am Allah as spoken to Prophet Moses is a violation of the precedent law of God Almighty. In order to authenticate the translation, the narrator or speaker in the Quran must identify himself by name and then introduce the new name of God. For instance, there are two names being told to Prophet Moses at the same time, for confirming that Yahweh and El Shaddai are the same person. The same principle shall apply to Isa and Jesus, of which Lord Jesus Christ should have spoken in the Quran, before anyone can say so. And God spake unto Moses, and said unto him, I am Yahweh. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of El Shaddai, but by my name Yahweh was I not known to them. Exodus chapter 6 verse 2 to 3. In Exodus chapter 23 verse 13. Yahweh says, And in all things, that I have said unto you be circumspect, and make no mention of the name of other Elohim, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. In Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 20, Yahweh says, But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other Elohim, even that prophet shall die. By the criterion of the Torah, Allah is a false god who never says I am Yahweh and I am also known as Allah. By the criterion of the Quran, Allah failed to raise two prophets so as to fulfill his claim in the Quran. Hence the narrator in the Quran cannot qualify the criterion of the prophets stated in Quran al-Imran chapter 3 verse 81, as two prophets must be required to help, 
and confirm a later messenger or apostle like Muhammad. It is the responsibility of the messenger to find a practicing prophet, to confirm so and so, is the prophet of Yahweh. Prophet John ben Zechariah proclaimed the Messiahship of Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 1 verse 29 The next day John sees Yeshua coming unto him, and says, Behold the Lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of the world. Unquote, no one can proclaim Isa is the same person, as Jesus, unless a recognized prophet has proclaimed to be so. Prophet John ben Zechariah had set the precedent example for all to fulfill. Masih bisa bertanya selanjutnya? Can he ask second question? Okay, short and sweet. Yeah, cepat. Kalau Isat itu Yesus, apakah pernah ada terjadi peristiwa pembunuhan Yesus atau penyelipan Isa? If Isa is Jesus, was there actually the crucifixion of Jesus or Isa? Crucified, crucifixion, yes. If Isa, Isa is Jesus, was there uh, true that he was crucified? Okay, now I would want the translator to translate while I'm giving the answer. Are you listening? Mendengar. Okay, now listen carefully to my answer. The question Jesus asked, that was Isa alayhi salam or Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, crucified? You want to know who was crucified? Jesus or Isa? Is that your question? Yeah, benar. Is it Jesus or is it Isa? That's what you want to know. Tadi saya pertanya pertama, apakah Isa Yesus? Kalau Isa itu Yesus, apakah pernah Yesus atau Isa pernah disalib, dibunuh, mati dan bangkit kembali? My first question is, uh, Isa is the same with Jesus. Correct. Is, it is the same. Yes. Was he crucified? Okay. The reply is given in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 157. It starts with saying, وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّ الْقَتَلْنَ الْمَسِيُّ إِسَ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ They said and boast the Jews that we killed Jesus, the son of Mary, they killed him not, neither did they crucify him. It was only made to appear so. All those who differ are full of doubts. They are full of doubts. With only conjectures to follow. For uh, truly they killed him not. So according to the Quran, he was not killed. He was not crucified. Thus Allah, but Quran chapter and verse 157 did not begin with us Allah says, neither angel Gabriel says. How could Zakarnaik put his own words into the mouth of Allah or the words of an unnamed narrator, as the word of Almighty God? This is the proof of blasphemy against the Almighty God, that Zakarnaik has committed before an audience of about 50,000 eyewitnesses. Under the Torah of Moses, Zakarnaik is guilty of blasphemy, as only two or three eyewitnesses are required to establish every charge against him. May Yahweh Almighty grant understanding to Zakarnaik so as to comprehend that it is a blasphemy against Lord Jesus Christ and your Divine Majesty as you are Akkad, the Absolute One. Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled every word which he spoke before his crucifixion, death, resurrection and ascension to heaven. Thereafter he confirmed his mission after his resurrection and also in the final testament in the book of Revelation. The next verse, Surah Nisa chapter 5 verse 158 says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up alive unto himself. As far as the Quran is, is concerned, Quran is very clear, very explicit. Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse number 157, Jesus Christ peace be upon him was not killed, he was not crucified. Now I'll give you the answer from your Bible. Okay. Do you believe in the Quran, brother? Do you believe in the Quran? Do you believe in the Quran, yes or no? Sampai saat ini belum. No. I will give you the answer from your Bible. Do you believe in the Bible? Do you believe in the Bible? Yes. Percaya Injil. Yes. Okay. 
I have given the talk, crucifixion or crucifixion, or was Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, really crucified? Time will not permit me to give the full lecture and the debate. I'll give you only one sign. If you read the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38, it says, when people ask Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, O oh Lord, O oh Master, will you show us miracles and signs? So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, replies, Ye men of iniquity, you evil people, you ask for a sign, no sign shall be given to you except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is putting all his eggs in one basket. He says, you evil and adulterous generation, seek it the after a sign. No sign shall be given to you but the sign of Jonah. Brother, do you know the sign of Jonah? Brother, do you know the sign of Jonah, yes or no? Yes or no? Pertanyaannya kurang jelas, terlalu panjang. Jadi, singkat-singkat saja. Do, do, yeah, yes or no? Why are you giving 10, 20 words? Do you know the sign of Jonah, yes or no? Do you know the sign of Jonah, yes or no? Do you know Prophet Jonah? Do you know Prophet Jonah? Oh, you know, tahu, tahu. No, yes, he knows. He knows. Why don't you translate? Jonah, saya tahu. You know, tahu. Yes, yes, he knows. You translate everything what he says. Now, why are you keeping quiet? Yes, he knows the prophet of Jonah. Every Christian has to know the sign of Jonah because they teach him on Sunday, even in Sunday school. The sign of Jonah, if you read the Bible, in the book of Jonah, it is hardly one and a half side. Almighty God asked Prophet Jonah, in the Quran, it is universal, in the Quran, universal salam, to go and deliver the message to the people of Nineveh. He goes to Joppa, thinking the people of Nineveh will not understand him, will not follow the message. While he's going in a boat, a storm comes. It was a superstition of that time, that a storm comes in the sea, when someone disobeys his master. So the people want to try out lots. Who in the ship has disobeyed his master so that we can throw him overboard? Jonah being a prophet of God, he volunteers. I am the prophet of God. I have disobeyed my master. Throw me overboard. When they throw Jonah in the sea, I want to ask you the question. Was Jonah dead or alive? According to the Bible. Berdasarkan cerita atau sejarahnya dalam Alkitab. Dia hidup di dalam perut ikan. Brother, why are you giving sentences? I'm asking if him dead or alive. One word you should say. Why are you giving sentences? Hidup di dalam perut ikan. Live, 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 live. Why don't you open your mouth, brother? Yes, live. If you cannot give the microphone to him. Whenever he opens his mouth, you reply, no? Don't wait for me to stop. Yes. Live. He, now, Prophet Jonah, is thrown in a storm. In a storm, when a person puts in a storm, when the person is put into a storm, he ought to die. But according to the Bible, was Jonah dead or alive? Dead or alive? Dia hidup di dalam pertukan. Life. Okay. A fish comes and gobbles him up. When a fish comes and gobbles a man, a man ought to die. Was Jonah dead or alive, according to the Bible? He did. Alive. Very good. Alive, alive, alive. Miracle of a miracle of a miracle. Three days and three nights, the fish, according to the Bible, takes him around. Heat, suffocation in the belly of the fish. Any human being ought to die. According to the Bible, was Jonah dead or alive? Saya yakin dan percaya Allah itu maha kuasa, maha mampu. I believe that you know. I believe. I believe that God is Almighty. Okay, alive, alive, dead or alive? Hidup, hidup, alive. Yes, hidup, 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 hidup. Yes, and for dead, hidup, alive, hidup, hidup, hidup. Yes, and for dead, for dead, mati, mati. Yes, mati or hidup. Yes. Mati atau hidup? 
the fish gobbles up the fish vomits out jonah on the yes, beach yes. was jonah dead or alive hidu pomadi hidu mashallah alive 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 miracle of a miracle of a miracle of a miracle when a person is thrown overboard in a storm he ought to die jonah was alive a fish comes and gobbles up yet he is alive three days and three nights suffocation yet he is alive he vomited on the shore yet he is alive 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 miracle of a miracle of a miracle of a miracle now jesus christ peace be upon him says in the gospel of matthew chapter number 12 verse number 38 So as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. When Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was put up on the cross for crucifixion, a person ought to die. Crucifixion, according to the Oxford Dictionary, means a person is put to death on the cross. after jesus christ peace be upon peace be upon him was taken on the cross he was put in a sepulcher in the heart of the earth the common misinterpretation on the phrase the heart of the earth is the tomb which lord jesus christ never says so by taking he don the declaration of prophet john ben zechariah the key mission of lord jesus christ is to redeem the sense of the adamic race the spiritual parallel used by lord jesus christ is the heart of the earth and the belly of the great fish are both living creatures hence the heart of the earth is the heart of the first adam since he was created from the dust of the earth based on genesis chapter 2 verse 7 furthermore the heart of man is the root of defilement of the body based on matthew chapter 15 verse 18 whereby lord jesus christ said but that which proceedeth from the mouth cometh from the heart and that is what defileth a man The spiritual defilement of the soul cannot be atoned by animal sacrifice as Lord Jesus Christ came to institute the new covenant of forgiveness which began once the curtain of the temple of Jerusalem was split into two from top to the bottom. Yahweh Almighty had ceased the Old Testament of Moses. Matthew chapter 27 verse 50 to 51 Yeshua when he had cried again with a loud voice yielded up the spirit. And behold The veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. During the previous evening Lord Jesus Christ held the last supper. He instituted the new covenant by shedding his own holy blood for atonement of the sins of Adamic race. In Matthew chapter 26 verse 28, Lord Jesus said, "This is my blood of the new testament, which in behalf of many is shed for the remission of sins." Prophet John Ben Zechariah declared that Jesus was the lamb of Yahweh who bears the sin of Adamic race. John 1 verse 29 the day after John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, "Behold, the lamb of God that beareth the sin of the world." Zechariah, you are a liar for saying that the tomb means the heart of the earth. As far as the holy scripture of Yahweh Almighty is concerned, the term the heart of the earth does not mean the tomb. As the great fish is alive then the heart of the earth must be a living creature and not the tomb According to the Bible was Jesus Christ dead or alive Di dalam kubur dia mati He died That means he did not fulfill the prophecy that means Jesus Christ peace be upon him lied Gospel of Matthew chapter number 12 verse number 38 Jesus Christ peace be upon him says no son shall be given to you except the sign of Jonah as Jonah was 3 days and 3 nights in the belly of the fish so shall the son of man be 3 days and 3 nights in the heart of the earth if Jonah was alive even Jesus Christ peace be upon him should be alive if he is dead that means he didn't fulfill the prophecy do you mean to say Jesus Christ peace be upon him lied was Jesus Christ a liar i love Jesus Christ if you say that i will get angry How dare you say that Jesus Christ was a liar peace be upon him Zachar Nick I heard you said and put your words into the mouth of Jesus Christ that he did not say he was dead Look at Revelation chapter 1 verse 17 to 18 Lord Jesus Christ said to apostle John fear not I am the first and the last and who lives and who have been dead and behold I am alive forever and ever Amen And I have the keys of death and of Sheol 
the definition of dead means the spirit departs from the physical body. Apostle Peter wrote well about Jesus Christ that his body was dead but his spirit was alive, because the Messiah also once died on account of sins, the just on account of sinners, that he might bring us unto Elohim. And dead in the body and alive in the spirit, he preached unto those souls who were held in shul. Quote 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18 to 19. Based on the aforesaid verses, the soul of Jesus Messiah preached to the souls who were held in shield during his physical death. So Lamson is on the right path but Zakernik has twisted the sign of Jonah, which Lord Jesus Christ has never said the heart of the earth means the tomb. Zakernik has offended three most important persons in the history of mankind namely Prophet John ben Zechariah, Prophet Jonah and Lord Jesus Christ, by failing to believe what they preached about Yahweh and not about Allah. Brother, did Jesus Christ peace be upon him lie? Did he lie, yes or no? Yes or no? Saya tidak bisa mengatakan dia bohong I, karena maksud dan tujuan I, I, ayat I, I itu cannot berbeda. Say something. You cannot say. Are but the Jesus Christ peace be upon him is saying in your Bible that as Jonah was, if Jonah was alive, he has to be alive. It is so clear cut. Why do you think he's dead? Where does it say in the Bible he was dead? He never claimed that he was dead. You are thinking wrong. Should you believe in the Bible or not? In the Gospel of Jesus recorded by Apostle Matthew in chapter 10 verse 28, Lord Jesus Christ said, And be not afraid of them that kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but be afraid rather of him, who can destroy both soul and body in hell. When Lord Jesus Christ said I have been dead in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, he meant his physical body was dead just, as he foretold about children of Bielis of Ab were capable to do in Matthew chapter 10 verse 28, and be not afraid of them that kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but be afraid rather of him, who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Moreover Lord Jesus Christ said in John chapter 12 verse 27, Behold, now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? My Father, deliver me from this hour? But for this very cause, came I to this hour. The term crucify has dual meaning, which includes to cause anguish to someone. Lord Jesus Christ said to Peter, James and John on the night he was about to be betrayed by Judas Iscariot. In Matthew 26 verse 38, and he said to them, There is anguish in my soul, even unto death. Unquote the burden of the sin of the first Adam was upon Jesus, the Lamb of Yahweh who takes away the sin of the world. The soul of Jesus Christ was crucified by the sin of Adam, which Lord Jesus Christ said, But for this very cause, came I to this hour. Even before the physical body was crucified on the cross, Jesus Christ was already crucified by the anguish in his soul. The sign of Jonah began from the hour the soul of Jesus Christ was in anguish until the third day, as he entered spiritually into the heart of Adam, or collectively the mankind from Adam and Eve. Furthermore, Lord Jesus Christ said, But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read, that which was spoken unto you by Elohim, saying, I am the Elohim of Abraham, and the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob? Elohim is not the Elohim of the dead, but of the living. Quote Matthew chapter 22 verse 31 to 32. As Yahweh is the Elohim of the living and not of the dead, this implies that the soul of Adam is alive, even though he is physically dead. This supports the words of Apostle Peter who wrote about the Lord Jesus Christ, dead in the body and alive in the spirit, he preached unto those souls who were held in Sheol, in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18 to 19. In other words, physical dead does not mean the soul of the person is destroyed at the same time. The soul of the person is alive, and only Yahweh Almighty has the power to destroy the soul in hell, whereas man only can kill the body and not the soul. Are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? Saya um, Christian. Yes, so I am Christian. So why don't you believe in the Bible? Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38. Don't you believe in the prophecy of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? Do you believe or not? Perumpamaan yang diberikan Yesus bukan seperti itu. The, the example given by Jesus is not like that. Saya berbeda. The example, the example given by Jesus is not like that. He said. 
I am quoting to you gospel of me. You make me understand what is the sign of Jonah. You make me understand. If you know the Bible better than me, make me understand. What is the sign of Jonah? Tell me. Tell me. Educate me. Saya bukan mengatakan lebih paham. I don't say that I, 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 I have understanding better than kita you. Berbeda. I, I don't I don't think that my uh, I don't think that I have uh, understanding better than you. If you if you don't have understanding better than me, then follow me. So according to the Bible, Ajan. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, fulfilled the sign of Jonah. He was put on the cross, but he did not die on the cross. Same thing as the Quran says, Vama kataluhu, vama salabuhu. They killed him not, neither did they crucify him. It was only made to appear so. Appear so. Okay. Okay, so do you believe okay. Jesus wasn't crucified? According to the Bible, forget the Quran. Do you believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified? Do you believe? If you don't believe, then what the use of talking to you? Mati di tang salib. Yeah, he is dead in the cross. Where does the Bible say that? I am quoting to you Bible. Jesus Christ prophesied, as Jonah was three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights. Do you mean to say Jesus Christ lied, peace be upon him? Do you want to call Jesus Christ a liar, Nausbillah? Kesamaannya. Brother, do Sorry. you want to call Jesus Christ a liar? Kesamaannya. Jesus adalah... Christ, answer my question. Do you want to call Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, a liar? Tidak bohong. No. Correct. So he said he will be alive. So why are you saying he's dead? Are you following the teachings of Jesus Christ or Zakir Naik? Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38. I'm giving you the reference. Are you following the teachings of Jesus Christ or me, Zakir Naik? Who is a better Christian, you or me? Who is a better Christian, you or me? Bukan masalah lebih baik dan lebih pintar dan lebih tahu. It is not tapi it is pemahaman. Yeah, it is Zakir not better. Better pemahaman saya have more sangat berbeda. But my understanding is uh, really different from yours. If you are different, that means you don't believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. My thing is Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Even according to the Bible, he did not die on the cross. He was not crucified. So who told you he was crucified? Who told you? Where did you get this from? Jelas tercatat di dalam Matius dan Markus clear reasons in Matthew. Dan it is clear reason in the Bible in the tidak mati wait, 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 wait. dan yang menjadi wait, 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 wait. let me have the translation wait wait what did you say it is clearly written in the matthew in the bible in the matthew where which verse tell me chapter number verse number tell me in matthew chapter 26 verse 31 to 32 then says jesus unto them all ye shall be offended because of me this night for it is written i will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad but after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Unquote Lord Jesus Christ foretold about his death as Yahweh said, I will kill the shepherd, which he said it refers to his death, since the following verse speaks of his resurrection, but after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. According to Zaker Naik, Jesus Christ was put on the cross but he did not die according to the Bible. Zaker Naik should look up the dictionary as what is the definition for crucified? Apparently Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. But Quran in the Isa verse 157 says he was neither crucified nor died on the cross. Lord Jesus Christ said, Fear not, I am the first and the last, and who lives and who have been dead, and, behold, I am alive forever and ever. Amen. And I have the keys of death and of Sheol. Quote Revelation chapter 1 verse 17 to 18. Prophet John Ben Zebedee, who saw Lord Jesus Christ and heard from him personally said, I am the first and the last, and who live and who have been dead, and behold I am alive forever and ever. So, Zaker Naik is caught lying that Lord Jesus Christ did not say that he was dead anywhere in the Bible. Saya tidak mungkin saya bacakan malam ini. 
Tapi saya tidak bohong. Yesus, it is impossible. Stop, stop. Wait, wait, stop. It is impossible for me to read it now. So whose fault it is? I've been asking this question for 25 years on the Fish TV channel. Get me one verse. I have a debate with your doctor of divinity. I have a debate with your bishops, with your pastor. But, okay, who who is the most who is your most famous pastor in Indonesia, brother? Who is your most famous pastor in Indonesia, brother? Who is your most famous pastor in Indonesia? Pastor, saya tidak percaya kepada pastor, hanya percaya kepada Alkitab. I don't believe in the priest. I believe in Alkitab. You believe it? Alkitab, believe in the Bible. Alkitab, you don't know the Kitab. I know the Kitab. If you believe in the Kitab. I'm talking about the Bible. Why don't you believe in the Bible? Do you think I'm lying? If you don't know who's to blame, you are to blame, not me. So according to the Bible and to the, according to the Quran, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified. He was not killed. As Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 12 verse 41, one greater than Jonah is here, then he is greater than Muhammad who performed no miracle. But Zakernik did not explain as to how Jesus Christ was put on the cross but he did not die when he said repeatedly to his disciples, the Son of Man will be killed and will rise on the third day. In Matthew chapter 16 verse 21, Mark chapter 9 verse 31, Luke chapter 9 verse 22, and John chapter 2 verse 19. The term the Son of Man is the same phrase used by Lord Jesus Christ in the sign of Jonah. Apparently, Zakernik was lying to his audience of about 50,000 eyewitnesses. As a matter of fact, Lord Jesus Christ is greater than Jonah means he is greater than Muhammad and Zakernik. The one greater than Zakernik means Lord Jesus Christ does not need Zakernik to speak on his behalf. Lord Jesus Christ left behind not only the Holy Scriptures but also three important exhibits namely the Shroud of Turin, Sudarium of Oviedo, and the empty garden tomb in Jerusalem. Mark with the red sign of Alpha and Omega. Apostle John, the author of the Gospel of John and Apostle Simon Peter saw two things inside the tomb of Jesus Christ based on John chapter 20 verse 3 to 8. The linen cloth that was used to cover the dead body of Jesus Christ is found together with a napkin that was used to tighten the jaw of Jesus Christ after his brutal dead. This picture showing the Shroud of Turin, believed to be the burial cloth of Jesus Christ, who foretold repeatedly that he would be killed but he would raise on the third day. The napkin called Sudarium of Oviedo is the exhibit kept at the cathedral in the town of Oviedo, in the north of Spain. The wounds on the nap of the neck found on the Sudarium of Oviedo, coincide perfectly with the blood stains on the Shroud of Turin. The first and most obvious coincidence is that the blood on both clothes belongs to the same group, namely A.B. No man can replicate the Shroud of Turin despite of the latest technology today. The Shroud of Turin has the marks of words look like Alpha and Omega, the signature of Lord Jesus Christ based on Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. The garden tomb has the burial place extended to accommodate a man of the height of about 5 feet 11 inches. Akin Kramarik was only eight years old, not a Christian and never attended Sunday school, when she painted the picture of the Prince of Peace. This is the miracle of miracles. As one compares the Shroud of Turin of the crucified man on all injuries from head, right side of the chest, both hands and feet described in the Holy Gospel of Jesus Christ, there is no room for doubt that you are looking at the holy face of the historical Lord Jesus Christ. Hence it must be the miracle of Lord Jesus Christ himself who left behind in this world, the sign greater than the sign of Prophet Jonah. The carbon dating on the Shroud of Turin is inaccurate due to the contamination on the Shroud caused by the fire on December 4, 1532. The fire burnt down the cathedral and heated the silver casket used to keep it. The hot, molten silver dropped onto the folded linen cloth inside damaging it and causing the now familiar pattern of burns extending along both sides of the image. The shroud is currently kept in the royal chapel of the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist in Turin, northern Italy. The Sudarium of Oviedo complements with the Shroud of Turin as the true burial close of Lord Jesus Christ. The doubt on the Shroud of Turin 
that the radiocarbon dating does not support the claim of first century linen was already refuted by Swiss textile expert, who examined the texture on the Shroud of Turin, and confirmed it is the linen cloth made at the time of Jesus Christ. Critics should stop doubting but examine the Sudarium of Oviedo beforehand. Imagine, the exhibits on the Shroud of Turin, Sudarium of Oviedo and empty garden tomb in Jerusalem speak better than the Quran. As I have repeatedly challenged all Muslims that nowhere in the Quran, Allah spoke to Muhammad directly, I am Allah, and whatever was spoken by Yahweh God to Prophet Moses remains the inheritance of the Hebrews forever based on Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29. No Muslim should plagiarize from the Hebrews but all Muslims are free to borrow the complete Hebrew to raw from the Hebrews. Plagiarism is a form of stealing someone else's ideas, and pass it on as his own ideas. As for borrowing, you acknowledge the ownership of the rightful owners. The burial cloth was only briefly mentioned in the Gospel of John, because of the tradition of the Jews who treated the burial cloth, as an unclean thing and never a holy relic. Just as Apostle John saw the linen cloth and the napkin lying inside the tomb and believed, I pray that many Muslims upon seeing the holy exhibits of Lord Jesus Christ, should stop doubting but to believe that his signs left behind in the world are indeed greater than Prophet Jonah. What is your third question? What is your third question? Pertanyaan ketiga apa, Pak? Pertanyaan berapa? Ketiga? Ketiga. Pertanyaan saya, tadi. Kalau ada peristiwa penyalipan, siapakah yang tersalib itu? If there was crucifixion, who was crucified? I think the brother did not hear the translation of the Quran I said. Quran is very clear cut. In Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 150, and I'm repeating it. is Ibnu Maryama. They said in both the Jews, we killed Jesus, the son of Mary. They killed him not, neither did they crucify him. It was only made to appear so. All those who differ are full, full of doubts. With only conjectures to follow. For a yakina, they killed him not. That means the Quran is very explicit. They did not kill him, neither did they crucify him. It was made to appear so. Who was crucified? I am not bothered in knowing. When Quran says, I should not be bothered, why should I be bothered? Whoever was crucified, I don't know. Apparently, Zaykir Naik was caught by surprise, without an option to escape the logical question of the Christian. Zaykir Naik said a few minutes earlier that the historical Jesus was put on the cross but he did not die so as to fulfill the sign of Jonah. If there is a crucifixion, who was crucified? Zaykir Naik have to deny the explicit words of Lord Jesus Christ, as he did not believe in Yahweh Almighty who sent Jesus Christ to say, the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified and he would fulfill the sign of Jonah on the third day, for as Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. As a matter of fact, Lord Jesus Christ did not say the heart of the earth means the tomb. The term put on the cross, has been defined as nailed to the cross, as the Romans used to do at that time. Oxford Dictionary defined crucify is, put someone to death by nailing or binding them to a cross, especially as an ancient punishment. Moreover Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples in Matthew chapter 26 verses 2 and 32 ye know that after two days is the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. But after I am arisen, I will go before you into Galilee. Lord Jesus Christ spoke two words crucified and risen, which means death and resurrection. Lord Jesus Christ also left behind three exhibits namely the Shroud of Turin, Sudarium of Oviedo, and the empty garden tomb marked with the sign of Alpha and Omega in Jerusalem city for the whole world to see. In John chapter 6 verse 44 to 45, Lord Jesus Christ said, No man can come to me, unless the Father who sent me, shall draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. For it is written, in the prophet, and they shall all be taught of God. Whoever, therefore, heareth from the Father, and learns from him, comes to me. 
Unquote, all Muslims do not believe in the historical Jesus Christ, because they are unwilling to be taught of Yahweh, and to learn from him who sent the Torah of Moses and the Gospel of Jesus Christ. The irrefutable fact is that there are two different Jesus Christ, of which Isa of the Quran was not crucified, whereas the historical Jesus Christ fulfilled the sign of Jonah on the third day. The eternal law of Yahweh the Almighty was proclaimed by his prophet Paul, as the password to enter the gate of paradise. It is written in Romans chapter 10 verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, that Yeshua is Yahweh, and shalt believe in thine heart, that Yahweh has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Unquote the King James Version for Romans chapter 10 verse 9 reads, Lord Jesus, which in Hebrew that the Holy Spirit of truth inspired to me, shall be written as Yahweh Yeshua or Yeshua is Yahweh. This supports Romans chapter 10 verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be saved. The devil, Iblis and his demons also believe in the historical Jesus Christ, as they were there by the cross of Jesus Christ, thinking that as dead is the defeat of Yahweh. But the devil cannot confess something, which the followers of Lord Jesus Christ must do. Devil and demons cannot confess, that as Yeshua is resurrected from his dead, because Lord Jesus Christ defeated Satan and his demons by his death and resurrection. The resurrection power of Jesus imprinted on the linen cloth his image in the crucified state, as the miracle greater than the sign of Jonah. The fact available to the Christians is crystal clear, that all Muslims are friends of Iblis the Satan, as they will not confess, what Satan refused to confess about Romans chapter 10 verse 9. So according to the Bible, Again. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, fulfilled the sign of Jonah, he was put on the cross, but he did not die on the cross, same thing as the Quran said. In conclusion, Zakir Naik, you should understand your Quran first that Allah never says to Muhammad, I am Allah. So who is actually speaking in Quran in the Isa verse 157? Do not encroach into the sign of Jonah until you are convinced as how could Allah be the narrator, when he never says to Muhammad, I am Allah. When you did not say, I am a prophet of Allah, can I call you prophet Zakir Naik? I know you cannot accept it. By the same analogy, you cannot simply call someone, Allah, when there is no such God called himself, I am Allah, in the Quran except for Quran Tawha chapter 20 verse 14, Quran chapter 27 verse 9 and Quran chapter 28 verse 30 which spoke to Prophet Moses in the translated version and not in original Hebrew based on Quran chapter 20 verse 9 and Quran chapter 46 verse 12. In short, there is no God who really called himself, I am Allah in the Quran. Why do you believe in the God, who has not spoken that his name is Allah? In Matthew 12 verse 41, Lord Jesus Christ said, The people of Nineveh will stand up in the judgment against this generation and will condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and lo, a greater than Jonah is here. Unquote Lord Jesus Christ is greater than prophet Jonah, which means he is not just another prophet of Yahweh Almighty. The main objective for the sign of Jonah is to affirm the exact day of the resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ after he foretold his apostles about his arrest, death, and resurrection on the third day. Lord Jesus Christ manifested himself in the world as the greatest sign to Israel. The Arabs of Saudi Arabia had rejected the sign of Jonah till Muhammad fabricated the Quran based on Quran Saba 34 verse 44 to 45 and yet omitted it in the Quran. Nowhere in the Gospel, Lord Jesus Christ reckoned the duration of three days and three nights, to begin from his entombment. But Lord Jesus Christ had expounded the sign of Jonah to Klipaz and his partner, while on their way to Ammaus village. Klepaz was reportedly the brother of Joseph adoptive father of Lord Jesus Christ. Joseph had died by the time and Klepaz was the next important person apart from the eleven apostles. Based on Luke chapter 24 verse 20 to 21, Klepaz and his partner narrated to Jesus Christ, and the chief priests and elders delivered him up to a sentence of death, and crucified him. But we expected that he was to deliver Israel. And lo! three days since all these things occurred. Unquote. Apparently, the reckoning of three days and three nights began on Thursday night shortly after the Last Supper, 
When Lord Jesus Christ like Jonah, lost his freedom and became captive of the evil men, whose intention was to kill him as prophesied by Jesus Christ earlier on. By Friday morning at 9 a.m., Lord Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross and he talked to Apostle John and his mother Virgin Mary so as to entrust Mary into his care knowing he would depart to Sheol in order to meet the first Adam and his descendants who were righteous ones. By Saturday night, the Romans guards were still guarding the tomb of Jesus Christ. Reportedly after midnight, Lord Jesus Christ rose from his tomb. The resurrection power imprinted his image on the linen cloth as an exhibit for the whole world to see. In term of the Jewish reckoning, it was the third day and Lord Jesus Christ ascended from hell and brought Adam and Eve, and their righteous descendants into paradise. Then Lord Jesus Christ first appeared to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Thereafter he appeared to Cleopas and his wife, Mary sister of Virgin Mary. Lord Jesus Christ did not rebuke them about who told you that I was crucified and died on the cross? Instead, Lord Jesus expounded to them concerning himself from all the scriptures based on Luke chapter 24 verse 27. After his appearance to Cleopas and his wife, Lord Jesus Christ manifested himself to the eleven apostles including Simon Peter in Jerusalem. He clarified all their doubts based on the scriptures from Luke chapter 24 verse 44 to 47. As a matter of fact, Lord Jesus Christ had twelve male eyewitnesses, whom he expounded to them from the Holy Scriptures after his death and resurrection. How many eyewitnesses are there in the Quran, who saw Jesus Christ was not crucified nor died on the cross? The whole problem with Islam is Allah cannot produce three eyewitnesses who lived at the time of Jesus Christ, to challenge the twelve male eyewitnesses, since 33 AD. How could Allah bother with the historical Jesus Christ? when he should have guided the Arabs in Saudi Arabia with the Holy Scripture in 33 AD. But Quran al kazas chapter 28 verse 46, Quran Saba chapter 34 verse 44 to 45, and Quran Hud chapter 11 verse 49, collectively proves that Allah was dead silent until Muhammad called Allah after his pagan forefathers worshipped it with three partners of goddesses called Alat, Alutza and Manat. It was Muhammad who made Allah to divorce Alat, Alutza and Manat so that he wished to make Allah comparable to the God of the Christians. But the stupidity of the Arabs is exposed by Hebrew Joshua chapter 24 verse 26, whereby Yahweh Almighty inspired the scribe of prophet Joshua to write three words together namely Elohim, Allah and Yahweh. Yahweh Almighty did not inspire Allah to mean his name as a scripture cannot be broken. By virtue of Quran al Imran chapter 3 verse 81, a later messenger like Muhammad have to agree with Lord Jesus Christ on his death and resurrection. As only the practicing prophets can confirm the prophethood of Muhammad, then why are Muslims acting as the prophet of God so as to declare Muhammad is a prophet of Allah? By virtue of Quran the hypocrites chapter 63 verse 1, not everyone who declares Muhammad is an apostle of Allah will be acceptable to Allah but shall be called hypocrites, because they are liars by nature. Zakir Naik, you are a hypocrite for lying that Jesus Christ never said he was dead, anywhere in the Bible. Lord Jesus Christ provides the antidote by becoming flesh and blood, in order to impart eternal life to the world, the descendants from Adam. Lord Jesus said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven, if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. Quote John chapter 6 verse 51. How could Muhammad qualify himself as the prophet of God, when he did not proclaim the message of Lord Jesus Christ, as the living bread, who came down from heaven for mankind, to eat him in order to inherit eternal life, as required of him in Quran al-Imran chapter 3 verse 81. In Psalms chapter 68 verse 18, Yahweh says, Thou hast ascended on high, Thou hast led captivity captive, thou hast received gifts from men, yea, for the rebellious also, that Yah Elohim might dwell among them. Apostle Paul wrote, But he who ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the low places of the earth? He who descended, is he who also ascended above all the heavens, to fulfill all. And he gave, some who are apostles, 
and some who are prophets, and some who are evangelists, and some who are pastors, and some who are doctors, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification of the church of the Messiah until we be all one in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of Elohim, and one man perfect in the measure of the stature of his completeness. Quote Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9 to 13. Apostle Paul is not only a doctor of philosophy PhD, as his epistles to the church was not a plagiarism, but was inspired by the Holy Spirit of truth. Hence, the above five-fold ministries shall remain the norm for the church until Lord Jesus Christ returns. The legal rights to interpret the spirit of truth, that Lord Jesus Christ foretold to come after him, was bestowed to the prophets of the church. Apostle Paul was chosen as the prophet of Lord Jesus Christ, as the roles of apostles and prophets are different gifts from Yahweh Almighty. Hence I call Apostle Paul by his two offices, which he carried for the church as Apostle Prophet. Apostle Prophet Paul wrote about Prophet James, not one of the twelve apostles but the Lord's brother. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 7, After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Galatians 1 verse 19, But other of the apostles saw I none, save James the Lord's brother. Prophet James being the Lord's brother, was the bishop or head of the Jerusalem council held around 50 AD so as, to deliberate on the questions of the law, whether the Gentile Christians should follow the Torah of Moses, which comprises of circumcision and refraining from unclean food. As a matter of fact, James was presiding the council in Jerusalem over Apostle Simon Peter and other apostles, implies that he was the Lord's brother according to the tradition of the church. As he was vested with the power over the apostles of Jesus Christ and prophets Judas and Silas under him, then he must be guided by the Spirit of Truth, which Lord Jesus Christ spoke of him in John chapter 16 verse 15. I shall call James Lord's brother, Prophet James since his noble task will be honored by fellow servants of Yahweh, according to the five-fold ministries of the church. In Acts 15 verse 13 to 14 and 20, it says, and after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon has declared how Yahweh at the first did visit the Gentiles, to take out of them a people for his name. But that we write unto them, that they abstain from pollutions of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. In Acts 15 verse 32, And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words, and confirmed them. Christians today follow the teachings of Prophet James brother of Lord Jesus Christ in respect of the abolition of the law of Moses. Apostle John was also the prophet of Lord Jesus Christ, and wrote amongst other books, the Gospel of John in the last book of Revelation. Lord Jesus Christ is the only person who has prophets before him, during his ministry and after his ascension to heaven. If Christianity may be called a religion, it is the only religion in the world today, which as prophets prophesied of him before Jesus was born, during his ministry, and after his ascension to heaven. There are at least seven male prophets known by names after the ascension of Lord Jesus Christ and four prophets from the daughters of Philip the Evangelist. However, Islam has no prophet to come during and after Muhammad so as, to fulfill the covenant of prophets, that Allah spoke to Muhammad as the later messenger based on Quran al-Imran chapter 3 verse 81, and as the messenger and the seal of prophets based on Quran chapter 33 verse 40. If Muhammad was the seal of prophets, then Allah have to raise at least one prophet before Muhammad was born. The pattern that Yahweh God gave as the precedent example for Lord Jesus Christ should be mirrored to the last prophet. But Allah failed because he is merely a pagan god of the Arabians. Why Muslims are so ignorant to reject the historical Jesus Christ, who provides antidote to impart immortality to Adamic race? As Muhammad was born naturally from the fallen nature of Adam, he failed to overcome sin like Adam, he was deceived by Iblis, to preach a false Jesus Christ similar to the forbidden fruit, which is a poison causing the spiritual death of his followers. On the day of judgment, Mary Magdalene, Cleopas, Prophet James Lord's brother, Apostle Prophet Paul and twelve apostles of Jesus Christ are eyewitnesses, 
who will stand against Muhammad and Muslims so that all Muslims, who did not repent of following the false Jesus Christ will be cast into hell fire forever and ever. Shalom.